We are now only one month away from Animal Crossing New Horizons finally being in our hands. There was still quite a lot we didn't know about the game, and while there are many things we still don't know, the new Direct we got a few days ago had a lot of new interesting details. Most things that we didn't know were just displayed to us for an in-depth look, however there were many things hidden within the Direct. So today, I'll be analyzing the New Horizons Direct for everything I can see. But before I do, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it. It would help me out a huge bunch. But anyways, let's jump right into my analysis of the Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct for every single detail that I was able to pick up on. I have probably missed something on the way because this is a 27 minute Direct, so if I missed something, please let me know in the comments. We first start off with Tom Nook preparing us for the Direct, which we later learn he'll do every day to announce the day's events. We see a possibly new type of fish or bug on the surface of the water here, which we may get a better view of later on in the trailer. This could just be a feature exclusive to one type of creature though. Jumping into the first newish thing we see, we are able to see the player is able to water multiple tiles in a single spray, which normally is only stuck to the silver and gold watering cans. This looks to be a normal watering can though, so maybe this is a universal change this time around. Now just to get it out of the way here, let's go over every villager shown off in the trailer, whether previously confirmed or not. Now keep in mind, I'm not great with names, so please bear with me if I pronounce some of these wrong. So we are able to see, in order, Bunny, Lily, Bob, Marshall, Bella, Eric, what I believe to actually be a brand new elephant, which is I believe our first new villager shown off in trailers, Back to the list, Flora, Flip, Wendy, Roald, Olivia, June, Shep, Savannah, Hans, Cherry, Buck, Tammy, my favorite villager Kid Cat is confirmed, yes! I'm pretty sure this next one is Lobo, although we could be wrong. Drift, Canberra, Margie, Zucker, Nate, Poncho, Flurry, Charlize, Dizzy, Apple, Francine, Sydney, Keaton, Rodney, Rennie, Sally, Pinky, Ozzy, Ali, Stella, Cat, Violet, Phil, Shari, Diana, Bud, Claus, Tutu, Julia, Kurt, Pearl, Sly, Patty, Spike, Bree, Molly, Bertha, Snooty. And in this scene, we seemingly actually get three brand new villagers, including a sheep, bear, and a horse. Continuing on, we have Goose, one of my favorites, Goldie, Hazel, I think Freya, although I could be wrong. Jay, Caesar, Moba, Dottie, Alois, Alfonso. I could not tell what this one is. It could be an existing one, although it's very hard to tell since this one over here is pretty small in the corner. Fauna, Bill, and Mint are all shown on Amiibo cards here, which likely means they're coming back. Fauna and Bill were shown before, but I'm unsure about Mint. Continuing on with more villagers, we have Chief, Roscoe, Stitches, and finally Jitters. That is a lot of villagers for just one trailer. Alright, now that we got those out of the way, let's jump back into the trailer. We can see that some villagers can now eat fudge pops. This will likely be a thing they can do during the summertime. We then see that if we place the tool outside, we are actually able to see them in their actual size, instead of them being in a box like a new leaf. Also, this is the same area as the first trailer, which is a nice touch. The tree here also looks a bit different while growing. Speaking of the tree, there is a pile of leaves over here, showing that these may not just be an exclusive fall item, and may be able to be made in any season. We then see Dodo Airlines, and we see that the plane is green, meaning the color of it and the airline itself will actually change depending on your town. Maybe the player can even customize this later on. We then get a view of selecting your map and the different hemispheres that were talked about during E3. We then get to view more shots of the island, and we can see that cherry blossom trees can also have their leaves collected into piles. We also see cherry blossom leaves attached to these pieces of furniture, so perhaps they're used in crafting them. We then see villagers could also have a sandwich. In this case, Bella. We then see Flora drinking, well trying to at least, something which to me looks like a soda. We then see a player carrying an acorn satchel which will likely give the player more inventory room, along with the other backpacks and satchels we've seen throughout this and other trailers. We then see some more things the villagers could do, like Flip eating a donut and Wendy lifting weights. We then get confirmation of the snowman returning as well. Our next scene shows us that villagers can sweep as well, as seen by Savannah. The player then shakes a tree and gets an ornament, which will likely be an exclusive item for spruce trees in winter. This will likely be used to craft some festive items like the tree here on the table. Another small detail is that you can see the player's breath during the winter time. Neat! We then get into talking about some of the facilities. 
We enter the Resident Services Center, and we see that Tom Nook can do some things like we see standard villagers do, like in this case reading a book. We also get confirmation that the slingshots will be returning, which is always nice. The prices of the items here have also been adjusted a bit since we've seen them at E3, like the watering can for example. We also learn we can buy recipes for bells, either by themselves or in groups. We then see some craftable items, and among these is an ocarina, which reminds me a lot of the fairy ocarina from Ocarina of Time. I wonder if it's usable, or if it's just a furniture item. We then see that some items, like the crafting bench here, are able to take up half tiles instead of just full ones. We also get confirmation that we are actually able to use these workbenches, which is very nice. We also see a signpost with a cat on it. I wonder if maybe we'll be able to put our own designs on it later. We then get to see that Timmy and Tommy are no longer in the resident service tent, and their place is a ton of golf equipment. This scene likely takes place after Nook's Cranny finally opens, which likely means that that store will be built before the town hall is completed. We also can see from what Tom Nook says that customization won't be available from the start of the game. We then see in the player's inventory a bunch of crafting items stacked a lot higher than what we've seen before. Most are stopped at 30, which makes me believe that's how high most things could stack. However, the paint is stacked up to 48, which could be exclusive to it, or go for all crafting items. We then see that we are able to color different parts of a furniture separately even adding our own design to some. Also, it seems like we could have transparency added to some of these as well, which means that some parts can be seen through, which would be very neat. Maybe you could lay them outside to give the illusion of footprints, like this one is implying here. We then see that the customized furniture is now a yellow leaf instead of a red one. We see many different items that can be designed by the player, such as the cushions on these couches, these chairs, this stool, and even this mug. The more the better, because I want to deck out my whole island with dry bones stuff, so the more furniture I can put dry bones on, the better. Dry bones for Smash. We are finally onto the Dodo Airlines segment. Throughout the trailer, we see four different colors used for the plane and airport being green, yellow, blue, and orange. We see that a player can make a whistle sound effect so that all players will look at the screen for a picture. Well, all of the ones not sleeping, of course. We then get a small look into sending letters, where some are even in limited supply. What's pretty interesting here, though, is that the player sends Tammy a tulip wreath, which is what I'm pretty sure we saw on the player's door in the first trailer. Can we maybe apply some furniture items directly to our house without needing to talk to Nook? Something else we'll have to find out about, I suppose. We then get a look at some of the Nook Miles achievements. The first one wants the player to catch 10 fish. We then see one talking about talking with your fellow residents, and another one similar to the first one except for bugs instead. Upon completing these, it seems you get titles added to your passport. In this case, lass or lad, depending on the player's gender. For this achievement, the player got 300 mileage points. We then see the player open the Nook terminal where we see a few options. We see a section where we can redeem Nook miles points, which we'll get into in a minute, Nook shopping which I imagine will allow you to order items off your catalog, and the ABD to store your bells. So what exactly can you redeem with these points? The first section is some pretty decent Nook merch, but we get into a ton of other interesting things in the next menu. We first see a ticket which we'll learn about a bit later on in the presentation will allow us to go to other islands. We see that the Pro Designer must be purchased along with the tool wheel we see later on. More tool recipes are also available along with different hairstyles. However, the most interesting of all is this one about inventory organization. Judging based on how expensive it is being equal to your whole deserted island getaway package, it's likely an inventory expander or something that allows you to stack more items into one slot, which would be both very exciting. We then see the wheel where we can place up to 8 tools, likely by starring them in the inventory, which we already knew we could do. The fan item also appears to be new here. In our next scene, we see the player straight up die. Our next shot shows that both fruit, which were able to be stacked in other games, and wasp hives are now stackable. Also, beehives have also changed their name to wasp hives. We then see that we can buy multiple of one item at once, seen here with medicine, which likely means medicine is stackable. We then get confirmation that Wisp will return, likely closer to his original functionality on the GameCube instead of New Leaf, where he will grant the player a wish, like removing all weeds in town for example. Gulliver will also get some confirmation sleeping on the beach as always. We see an interesting detail on the map here being a dock, however since most travels seem to be by plane instead of boat, I'm unsure what its function is. We then get to see the new rescue app, and while we don't get to see the operator, it's pretty clear that it's Rossetti's new job after autosaving put him out of business. The helicopter has his helmet and whiskers, 
His speech is just like how he said he would talk, and of course, a new rendition of his theme plays when talking to the operator, so yeah, it's pretty obvious it's him. Somewhere cozier in no time. It also appears this will cost Nook Miles points, as the player goes from 1,200 before to 700 at the end, which is a pretty big jump. We also see that fish can be placed outside, which is a nice touch. We now, one month before the game launches, finally get to see the inside of a player's house, where there's a lot of cool new features. For one, putting stuff in storage without needing a closet will be super helpful. It also seems like shoes can now be hung on the wall, which is something they couldn't do before. Additionally, the floor texture in the player's inventory got a new look as well. Sp speaking of the flooring, it can now be placed either vertically or horizontally, which is another nice touch. The house designing builds upon the foundation that Happy Home Designer and New Leaf Welcome Amiibo set, as it is a lot better here. Now we can place items that we have in storage, turn the camera, multi-grab, and many more things which will make house designing a breeze. We see the house go through so many changes like getting bigger, changing the roof color, and adding a side room. We then see Tom Nook drinking a soda, like we saw Flora do earlier. We then get to go to the new mysterious islands where we can find fruit that don't grow at home like peaches and new villagers. These islands will likely be much smaller than our own, and as stated, will be random each time. Furniture can also be seen already placed around the island, such as a workbench and campfire. Bamboo is also confirmed here. We also see that these islands can have areas in the center, and this implies that there can be multiple money rocks at once. We then see the player running from a tarantula where they show that a player could actually jump over small rivers, which will be very helpful when working with water, which we see later on. We also see that these islands aren't always in summer like the island in New Leaf, as this one is in winter here. We then jump into local multiplayer, and while there's not too much to show, it appears that you can only play with Joy-Cons in this mode, which is similar to how you can only use one Joy-Con while making levels in Mario Maker 2. In my opinion, this is kind of dumb mechanic, like there shouldn't be any reason why we can't be able to use Pro Controllers. However, I might just be reading this wrong, and we might be actually able to use Pro Controllers. We then get a look into the Nintendo Online app, which is for once, actually making me consider downloading it. We will be able to import designs from the QR scanner from New Leaf, and Happy Home Designer, which is a really nice touch. However, something else that is very interesting is that we may be able to design even more types of clothing in this game, which may be because we can decide some pixels are transparent. Before exiting the phone though, we also see a messenger app, which may be an in-game chat similar to the one we see on the real-life phone later. On the Nook Link phone app, we also see that passport, which will likely just be to show off or to send to others. We also see a best friends option, which we go into a bit later, and settings to change, well, the settings. Alright, we finally finished! Part 1 of 3, and this script is already 2,500 words long. Goodness, let's just get through this. We see the villager Flurry hunting a butterfly with their net, which adds some more personality. Speaking of, another villager Charlize is doing some exercise near the beach, rocking some nice shades. We then see that the player is responsible for where villagers move in, being prompted by Nook, which is such a good change. This likely means that any time a villager wants to move in, you'll have to talk to Nook first. We then finally get our first looks at how many of the facilities will look in this game, including the museum, Nook's Cranny which is run by Timmy and Tommy, the Able Sisters, and the campground. And oh my gosh, when I saw the museum, my jaw absolutely dropped. It's so beautiful and huge now. With how big it is, there must be several more things to fill it with as well. The scenery and lighting just make it look like an actual museum, and it's my favorite change to any facility so far by far. It's honestly one of my favorite new changes, and I can't wait to completely fill it this time around. We then get a look at Nook's Cranny, and it seems to look and act pretty similar to New Leaf, with the exception of it having a small gardening section now. It's unclear as of now if we'll be able to upgrade any of these stores, but if I were to guess, I'd say probably. We also get confirmation that yes, some items won't be craftable by the announcer, and we will have to purchase them, which makes complete sense to me. The Able Sisters have a lot as well with mannequins to display their items, and they even sell shoes as well now. I do have to wonder though, what's Sable's role now that we will most likely be making patterns on our phone? We also see a changing room which we'll jump into in a little bit. The campground is basically the same as New Leaf, so I'm not going to touch much on it. However, we do see Rodney eating a lollipop, so that's cool. We get a few more shots of the beautiful museum and then jump into the changing room. In here, we'll be able to try on clothes that can come in a variety of colors, then buy them all at once, which is pretty cool. The selection here is also very big, it seems, and I wonder if they actually have daily items or if it's based on your catalog. 
We then see Resident Service Tent get upgraded to basically become a town hall. Along with it, the message board also changes with the dirt floor now becoming brick. Lamp posts are also placed on the corner of the brick area as well. Talking to Tom, we see that we can do many things like expand and customize our house, which is pretty standard, but also relocate it to a new spot if we'd like to, which is a very nice addition. It seems like we will be able to customize our roof and mailbox, however some more things may come later on. We are also able to move shops if we want to, which may even be more useful. I do wonder if the move will be immediate or take a day or two though. We then see Isabel with a new rendition of the Town Hall theme from New Leaf playing in the background. She seems to have a similar role to New Leaf, assisting the player with their towns, which includes island evals, which will likely help you get those permits we see later, change the town tune, change the town flag which we see outside the resident service building and Dodo Airlines, and discuss a resident. Showed off next are some special villagers who will visit our town, old and new. First we see Label, who seems to have changed her name back from what she called herself in New Leaf, LaBelle, interestingly enough. Harvey mentions how he's the next island over, so perhaps maybe a boat is taken to get to him, and that's what the dock is for. Celeste is talked to next, and she's off the brick area, which implies that these special villagers will be able to move around. She talks about a wand that the player has in the next scene that seems to have the power to change the player's clothes. This one is also in a star shape, meaning stars may have a big crafting role, as a star net and bag were seen in promotional images and this direct. Let's go quickly through some of these characters. We have Sahara, Daisy Mae, who's replacing Joan as the turnip saleswoman, Kix, who now also sells satchels and bags, CJ, who replaces Chip for the fishing tourney, Flick, who replaces Nat for the bug tourney, Zipper T Bunny, Jack, Jingle, Franklin, and Pave. A few shots later, we see a brand new, fully metal shovel. In our next scene, we see a gold shovel, however I'm unsure if it's THE gold shovel, or if this game will even have an ultimate shovel like the gold one in previous games. Nearby, there also appears to maybe be an elephant-themed watering can. A metal fishing rod can also be seen in this scene as well. The player then uses a brand new tool, which is a ladder that allows them to climb cliffs, which I imagine will be pretty helpful. They get to see that we will be able to build and choose where to build slopes and bridges, which will be very helpful despite us also having the vaulting pole and ladder. The player then opens their phone and a few new apps are shown. First off is the encyclopedia, which will give us data on which fish and bugs have been caught. Then Nook Shopping, which may let us order items from anywhere, which would be very cool. And of course the big one, the Island Designer. However, before we get into that, we also see that these apps can go into a second page, which is nice to know. Jumping into the Island Designer app, upon activation it will give you several tools and a helmet. Interestingly, the first few trailers had the player wearing a bandana while making paths, so maybe the player isn't required to wear a helmet, or this previously didn't give you a helmet. Upon wanting to make a path, there are several options, however as you can tell not all of them have been unlocked, which I imagine will be done with Nook Miles. There seems to be 9 present ones along with confirmation that we will still be able to create our own designs. The 5 we see available right now are grass, dirt, stone, brick, and sand. For a brief moment, we see the menu pop up to change the path type, which is open with start. Also, another small thing is that here's another flower ring that the player can put on their doors. Anyways, we see the paths being placed down and even curved. Off to the side, we see another new fishing rod and the fact that we were able to stack bugs on top of fish, which is really cool. We also see something pretty huge, and that's how you can place furniture on paths, which will be super helpful in exterior decoration. We then get a look at water. We then get a look at the waterscaping and cliff construction permits, and since they weren't in the last shot of this menu, they likely need to be unlocked separately. These two are amazing, and are probably my favorite new feature shown in this direct. These allow you to remove or add water anywhere you like, even being able to curve corners you want to. The cliff construction permit allows you to build up cliffs or take them down if they get in the way. As a huge Minecraft player, these features are phenomenal and means the player will be able to work with any town they get. A few scenes later, the slingshot is shown off and interestingly, the bloom color has been changed from the normal red to yellow. Seems to be a theme with the red leaves being turned into yellow as well. We also see Kurt eating a bowl of something here, probably soup. Now there's many furniture seen in this trailer, such as a dinosaur fossil, power line, and lighthouse that are so big that I bet they may be outside exclusive items. Which I suppose should be cool to include so we can have bigger stuff. The player is seen placing a fence, which is a whole new type of item as it isn't in the shape of a leaf. Throughout the trailer we could see many different kinds, like this wooden one and this stone one previously. This will easily connect together similar to Minecraft fences and walls, so this will be very nice for decoration. 
The player also uses a brand new hammer tool to install these fences. With how many of these fences we need to place, they will likely be fairly cheap to make. In the garden, we also see some flowers which I believe can only be gotten by breeding, seemingly implying that it's back. We then see a gravestone for all of our fallen comrades. Ignoring the death, let's celebrate life with a birthday scene featuring three new villagers as mentioned earlier. Next to Goldie in the next scene, we see a building which could very well be a house, however it looks so different that it might actually be something new entirely. Here we see a rope fence and a cliff with no ramps, which likely means it was player created. Villages are seen in the museum with likely new animations to look at all the amazing fish. A celebration similar to Public Works Project celebrations in New Leaf is held at the bridge, seemingly for its completion. Our next shot gives us not only a look at the new fence type, but confirmation that furniture can be placed on these rocks, which is cool. Alright, part 2 is done. Lucky for me though, the final part 3 section is a lot smaller. Our first detail is the fact that this town could be called Nintendland, which is 10 characters long, which is longer than any other previous games allowed you to name your town. Smashville can now finally be a real town. Also, while it's not an important detail to the game at all, I really liked that Minecraft made a small appearance here. I genuinely think it had a huge influence on this game, and this little nod cements that for me. As a fan of both, I'm absolutely happy with that. But anyways, back to the important details where we get to see the character customizer, which is one of the features I wanted the most. I assume this is taken from the start of the game, and we see that not all options are available to us. Interestingly though, the first trailer showed a girl starting out with a hairstyle not shown here, so maybe this isn't fully accurate. Anyways, we have five customization tabs with the first one being a face, which may change skin color or face shape, hairstyle, eyes, nose and mouth, which this is the first game where noses can be different, and one I can't really tell what it is. It also seems like all of this is set up at the airport, which may mean Rover is unfortunately gone. Anyways, we see a lot of big houses, which may be what they look like fully upgraded. On to Amiibos. It's shown we can scan them into the Nook Terminal, and villagers with cards will go to the campsite where we can invite them to our town. Harvey now runs an island called Photopia, where you can use Amiibos to create photo shoots. Speaking of, since Harvey was one of those characters that visited your town earlier, can maybe one of the other characters like Label and Celeste get their own stores or things after visiting? That'd be pretty cool to see. In this photo mode, villagers can be trust imposed in any way you like. Some villagers and characters like KK Slider aren't available from launch, however they will be coming later on. This new Dodo code will be super helpful for making new people visit your island, or even only having certain friends visit. It's also nice that some tools are disabled to avoid griefing. In the Best Friends app, you can likely talk to anyone who's online, and even send a message to all as seen by this button here. This app may also contain other players, like normal friends, or players you've played with, as there are five other tabs, and we're only seeing the second one as of now. We can also see a Wi-Fi button, which may let you turn off contact if you don't want them bothering you for whatever reason. For our final detail, we see that Timmy and Tommy may join Nook sometimes in his daily announcements. However, this may have just been done for this direct. And that's finally it for the super long video. This Direct was incredible, and every second I see of this game makes me want it more. This answered most of my questions with a few exceptions like Nintendo items, but this was still super good. But that's enough of my thoughts, how did you enjoy the Direct, and are you hyped for Animal Crossing New Horizons? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please drop a like and subscribe, as that helped me out a huge bunch, and I've been working on this video for such a long time, so this video, I would really appreciate it. I plan to stream this game a lot once it finally drops, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Links to my Twitter and Discord are in the description if you're interested. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!